I've got a few stories for everyone today, from Threadripper running at an incredible clock speed to a new Razer keyboard. But first, if you liked the video, definitely make sure to subscribe. It helps the channel and ensures you get updates on all things GamerMeld. So stay tuned. Welcome back to GamerMeld. I really wanted to do this story yesterday, but with all the Vega and Threadripper details, I just wasn't able to. Either way, here I am, and there Threadripper is, running at 5.2 freaking gigahertz. Yes, we're talking liquid nitrogen here, but it's always fun to see the crazy amount of power you can get out of a CPU with extreme cooling. They got to 5.2 GHz on all of Threadripper 1950X's 16 cores using a x 52 multiplier with quad channel RAM running at 2133 MHz. It got a sentiment score of 4122, which is unbelievably impressive considering the second place 16 core is a Xeon with a score of 2867. Next up for today is probably going to upset some who are hopeful of experiencing gaming with four Vega GPUs. While you probably will get the chance, as Vega does officially support Crossfire, AMD confirmed that they plan to offer limited developer support for multi-GPU Crossfire setups with Vega, and that the industry as a whole is moving away from multi-GPUs in general, at least when it comes to gaming. The media was prompted to ask, given the lack of mentioning the feature during Vega's reveal, which was a staunch difference to, say, the Polaris launch, which held it as a major selling point. This is certainly similar to NVIDIA, considering they cut down support to only dual SLI when they launched the 1000 series GPUs. Some may bring up DirectX 12's feature that support multi-GPUs, but it seems the industry is moving away from multiple GPU support as a whole, unless they think the DirectX 12 is the future, but it doesn't really seem like it. One idea is that this is just a push for their future introduction of Navi, which is supposed to offer the same type of design that Ryzen Zen architecture uses that utilizes the Infinity Fabric as an interconnect to create a single chip with multiple modules for very easy scaling. We also know NVIDIA is doing something very similar. Whether you yourself could add on GPUs and the system view them as a single one is less likely, but may be possible if something like the Infinity Fabric is actually in the motherboard itself. That's of course just an idea and probably not something in the near future, if it's possible at all. Lastly for today are a few notable hardware releases at SIGGRAPH. First up is the Razer 10 Keyless Chroma version 2. It offers the same individually backlit RGB lighting, 10 key rollover, USB pass through, etc, etc. What's interesting about the version 2 is something Razer has coined as instant trigger technology, which supposedly cancels any delays between key actuations. Whether this will actually be something noticeable will only tell in time. The keyboard won't come cheap though at $160, but considering it's more aimed at esports professionals, if it can make some kind of a difference, it might actually be worth it to them. Then we have Thermaltake's 12 LED radiator fans. The ring <laughs> with two eyes. These are nice because they offer a decent alternative to NZXT's RGB fans and look quite nice just like them, but they actually offer the better static pressure required for radiator use. So while that does it for today's story, is let me know what you thought. Are you pumped for Vega or just sad multi-GPU support is slowly fading away? Let me know in the comments below. That does it for now. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the round icon in the middle. You can check out the most recent video and suggest a video to the left. Thanks so much for coming, and as always, have a great day.